Hello and welcome to the Now I Catch Pips YouTube channel. Today I want to share with you the simplest way to find trades in the market. No indicators, no fluff. Let's get into it. Hi, this is Nick Pips and I teach you how to give your dollars a job. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and if you could tap the like button that helps YouTube share this information with other individuals with similar interests. So I've created a new telegram chat so if you can go into the description of this video click on my link tree and then go to free telegram chat click on that and you'll be able to join my telegram and see where I share trade ideas and what's going on with me and uh, when I post new content to YouTube. So let's get into today's content. All right team so I just want to do a quick video on uh, market structure and how to find your own trade setups. So I know we have a lot of new traders and you're probably like, okay, what I do with all this information that's coming my way. So for right now, I just want you to pause on a lot of the back office training and things like that and just focus on this one thing that I'm about to teach you right now, okay? And that's market structure. This is the ba basics or the foundation of a majority of our trading styles in the money don't sleep slash pay to live trading group, okay? And so, what is market structure? Market structure is literally just, uh, just like I said, structure. So in structures, we have uh, floors, AKA foundations, right? And we also have ceilings, right? Um, like in a building, you know, we have different floors, right? Um, you know, first floor is, is on the bottom, second floor, unless you have a basement, right? But you get my point. And so as you can see in this market right here, we have a series of, of market movements that are identifying to us that price is doing one or two things or one or three things is either going up, right? Like this, all right? Or it's going sideways, right? Which means it's not going up or neither down, right? Or we have price moving in a downward matter, right? In this direction, right? So we have price going up, going sideways or going down. Now, the easiest way to identify which direction price is going, like if you look right here, during this time frame, what was price doing? Was price going up or down? It wasn't going either or, right? It was, on, it was going sideways. So that's an example of the sideways market. Now, in this example right here, from this top level up here, down to here, now can you identify what was price during, doing during that time? It was going down, right? It was in what we call a downward trend, okay? So next example, what was price doing from this point here up to here, all right? Price was moving upwards. So those are the three examples of how price moves in the market. It's, it's either one of those three things, either it's moving sideways, it's moving down, or it's moving up. Now, this is the best way to identify it. So when we come into the market and uh, let's say, this is how the market looks when you come in, right? So let's move this down. This is Audi CAD that we're looking at. So right now you'll see that price is moving in the upward trend, right? Because it started down here because price moves from uh, from uh, right, I mean from left to right. So as you can see, this current candle is painting. If I zoom in, you'll see that current candle is kind of moving every now and then. That's the Audi CAD price. And this is the one hour candle that is forming, okay? And so, that being said, this is clearly uptrend, right? We have price coming from this low. It made this peak. It pulled back, made this low, and then it continued up to this level, right? And then it pulled back, making this low, and it came up to this level. So these series of, this is a low. This is a high, right? Because price came up, hit his head on the ceiling, and then came back down and then hit this floor. Why do I call this a floor? Because after hitting this area, price went back up. So it bounced off the floor, kind of like those, those little plastic balls that you could buy in the quarter slot machines, right? Or 50 cent now, I think they are, right? You throw it off the floor, it bounces and it goes up, right? Same thing. So this right here is, a, is clearly a floor because price, these several times that it hit this area, it was not able to break that area, aka that foundation of that floor. And then price continued to move up. So we make that, we consider that a low. Now price got up here to this level, we hit his head on the ceiling a couple of times and then price dropped back creating another floor right here where this price ended at before it shot back up again, making this high. So these series of low, high, 
higher low, right? Because this low is higher than that low. So we call that a higher low. Making this new high, we call that a higher high. Okay, so if I go with H, H for higher high, this is a low, this is a high, this is a higher low, right? This is a higher high because it's higher than this high, and this is another higher low because this low is higher than this low, and again, this is another higher high. So that's the basis of a trend, okay? And this is a low right here. This is a low, uh, higher low, all right? So that's the basis of an uptrend, guys. All right, so right now, if you look at it, price is moving sideways in this area, but it's overall on the uptrend. So ideally, we wanna look to buy. So um, if I was breaking this down, looking at this level, um, I would mark up uh, with my uh, horizontal tool and my uh, rectangular tool, I would mark up this low right here, right? Where I have these series of candles wicking out on that floor and hitting that floor. And then I would mark off this ceiling where I have a series of areas where price was hitting his head. So right now I got that price trapped. So if it continues to go sideways, that's fine. So let's play the market forward a little bit and let's see what happens. Now these are our candles y'all cause we're on the H1 chart. Um, if we was on a different time frame, like the 4H, each candle would represent four hours, right? but we're gonna go ahead and stick this is a one hour candle. So as you can see, price is still respecting this floor. So as it made this floor right here, when this particular candle came down, wick down and pull back up. And then if this blue candle, all right, if I get a, a nice blue candle, I go ahead and buy. So right there, I will go ahead and probably get into a buy right there. So let's see what happens if we did that. So after this candle form right here, this big blue candle, we got in right there. And we're gonna put our stop loss just up under our floor. Cause if price hits that floor, we expect it to bounce back up. And we'll just set our target at this high because again, in the past, when price hit this level, it came back down. So in this example, I will be risking 20 pips to possibly make 30. So let's play it forward and see what happens in that example. And in that example, it broke our floor. So we would have lost that trade. Welcome to Forex. Sometimes your trades don't work out. Yes, it was in the uptrend, but now it broke that floor. So now what it could be getting ready to do is start what we call a downtrend. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, delete that. There we go. So now it broke my floor. So let's see what happens. Let's see if it creates a new floor. All right, so right there, it looks to be creating a new floor. So let me just, I'm not gonna take that floor away. Let me just make another floor. Let's do this right here. Let's create another floor. All right, so now we got this new floor that has been created. So now what we have, guys, let me go ahead and delete all these markings. Oops, here we go. Do that. All right. Get rid of these right quick. Give me a second. Uh, uh, come on, now don't do me like that. There we go. That's a lot of brush strokes. There we go. Cool. All right. So now what we have is this, right? We have what they call a low. So this is a new low, right? So right here we had a high, a low a lower high, because right this high right here, this one is lower than that high, so that's a lower high. Now we have a lower low. So now we have the beginnings of a downtrend. So just like we had the high highs and higher lows, now we're gonna have a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, lower high. You get it guys? So that's the beginnings of a downtrend. So now we have a lower low. So let's see what price does. Most of the times it'll go back and retest that same prior um, low right here as a, as a high or a lower high. So let's see what happens. As you can see, price is respecting this level. That's a, that's a pretty strong floor, but let's see what happens. So there, it broke that floor. Now, when I'm doing setups, this is what I do, y'all. So when we had that, that break of this floor right here, let me go back. All right, we can draw what's called a trend line, guys. So when we identify this trend, we could have drew a trend line. And what we want to do is we want to take our, either this trend line tool, which is right here. If you click on this little arrow, we have the trend line tool. And then we have a ray. I personally like to use the ray. And let me show you the difference. If you got a trend line, you would click at the low and you would pull this line across. 
Now, um, when I draw trend lines, I draw them a little differently. This particular move right here from this low created this, this, this new high, right? Because this was the prior high before that. We had this pullback, and then this new high was formed. So for me, I take my trend line at the bottom or the, that wick at the bottom of this move that started this new high. I put my trend line across that at the wick, from wick to wick, all right? Some people may tell you go body, I go wick to wick, all right, because wicks matter. And as you can see, right now, what happened right here when price came down and made this new low, hit our trend line, kind of reacted a little bit and pulled back, then it broke through, creating this floor, then it came back up and retest what just happened to be our trend line, the bottom of our trend line, right, because originally we had price bouncing off the top of it, making higher highs. Now it broke that trend line. Now it's making lower lows. So when price comes back and retests my trend line, it gives me this nice, let me zoom in, this nice bearish candle, which is actually, if you look at our candlestick Bible, that's a bearish engulfing. So that shows that's a lot of bearish or selling momentum right there. So I'm gonna get in and ride that after that. So remember, we just lost a trade with 30 pips. And remember when we get into trades, we always wanna manage our risk one to 3%. So in this example, I will put my stop loss just above that engulfing candle. And my targets actually could be down here at this prior low, right? Because a lot of times what you'll see in the market is that areas that used to be areas of structure are held in the future. So let's go ahead and play that forward and see what would have happened if we had taken that trade. Bam, in that case, we got a W, right? We lost 30 pips up here. We won 50 on this one. So we're positive. 20 pips. I'm sorry, not 20 pips, 10 pips. What? All right, so cool beans. All right, so with that being said, cool. But look how price hit that level. Remember I told you in the past, this was one of our lows. And now look, price just happened to react in that area. And we got a blue candle. Let me go delete that out the way. So now we got a blue rejection candle with the wick respecting that floor. So that's the basics of, see, look at that. We got a nice rejection off that same level. We come over here and put our crosshair over here while we had that low right before we got that bounce up. Look at price and what it did in that area in the future. We had some more bullish momentum show up, just like it did right here. Now, it may be a small pullback, and then it continues to go down and break. Let's see what happens. But this is the basis of finding your own trade setups, guys. It's just understanding the, the, the dynamics of market structure. You know, um, we could use Fibonacci. We could do all other kind of things. But market structure is something that, as you can see, is respected. So when price came back to our, what used to be our floor, right? So over here in this area, that was our floor. Now that we've broken that floor, now it's becoming our ceiling. As you can see, price is hitting his head, dropping, hitting his head, dropping. That's market structure right there, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see what happens with price. Up, oh, it got inside of our ceiling and it bounced back down. Let's see what happens. This time it may break through because we've had one, two, three hits there. A lot of times you'll have three hits and then you'll finally get a breakthrough. It's kind of like, you know, you're hammering a, a, a wall and you, you, each hit is, is weakening the wall. And sooner or later that, that hit is going to break through the wall. That's what's happening right here. That's why price is pushing through that level right now. But at that point, this area, aka ceiling, had been tested one, two, several times already. So in that case, you want to already be cautious because a lot of times, like I said, if it hits it a fourth time, that fourth time or more, most unlikely it's going to get broken through. So you're good for two to three tests of that area. After that, I would be expecting a breakthrough. And as you can see, we got a breakthrough in that, in that example, right? So that's the basis of market structure. So I want to teach you guys that and just go through and practice um, finding those areas, right? So that way, you'll get very, very familiar with how to identify these key areas and utilize those to find your own trade setups, right? Because it's cool to take trade signals, right? And ideas from individuals, but we're not here to give a man a fish. We're here to teach a man a fish. And so um, I sent out an AudiCAD trade to the team um, earlier this week. Um, I was going through looking at the charts and I saw a market structure. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and bring that up now. So I drew my trend line first, as you can see right here. I had my trend where price was hitting these levels, right? And it's uptrend. Well, at the time, price was right here, I believe. 
Uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and pull it up. I think I got it in the background. You guys should be able to see RDCAD. So this is where RDCAD was. So if we just break this down, as you can see, this is my trend line, the orange line going through the market. And at the time, this was a key level, right? Because during this uptrend, price hit his head on this ceiling and bounced down to this floor. So I marked that area and drew it across. As we can see, when price came to this level, again, we're in the uptrend, it kind of paused right here for that one red candle. And then it took off and broke through that ceiling. Then it came back. And a lot of times when you have a breakthrough, when price returns back to it, coming back down, remember we're in the uptrend overall, price came back down to retest this prior ceiling as a floor. So I took a buy from that area because again, we're in the uptrend, price broke through, is pulling back and retesting or retracement. That's another word that people use. And so at that point, price is showing rejection. You see this wick and you see price wick down here, creating what looks like a doji candle, right? And that example, I'm looking to buy because again, uptrend, a prior ceiling, because price hit his head here, came down, hit his head here, came down. This time it broke through. So to me, that's strong bullish momentum. So when price pulled back on this retracement, I'm okay with that because I'm looking to buy right here. A pullback or retracement is just a value added to your trade as a buyer because instead of buying up here and having to deal with all this drawdown on this pullback, you wait for the pullback and you buy right here when price gets back to this key level, aka your market structure. So we bought right there. So if you look right there at that candle, let's go ahead and find that candle. So we had that push up and then we came down. So let's go ahead and find that candle in our setup. That was right here. So let me go ahead and play it back for you. So that was somewhere in this area right up in here. So as you can see, we took our buy from right there. So let's go ahead and play that forward. So we took a buy. As you see, we had a little bit of a pullback. Matter of fact, let me pull up my risk and reward tool that I had for the trade. There you go. So we had a little bit of pullback right there, as you can see. We had a little bit of pullback where price was in that area testing, but it held. That floor held. And then we had price come up. And let's go ahead and play it forward. Now we had price pull back, test that floor again, test it again, but it's holding. And bam, right there. We had price take off. Hit our TP. Remember, I was targeting the prior high. It hit our TP. That was a 12 pip, pip risk because, again, I want to put my, well, in this case, I put my stop loss under my structure and I want to put it under my trend line. That's why I put it a little bit lower. So I have that market floor as my protection and that trend line, if price respects that trend line, as my barrier. And if price breaks down or goes lower than that, then I want to go ahead and exit the trade because maybe it's not going to continue to go up. So that's how I broke down, that's how I break down that trade right there. That was literally, I was just walk, looking through the market and saw this structure and, uh, and, and uh, took that trade and sent it out to the team. And we ate 32 pips off that example right there. Now this is what's crazy, right? Let's play it forward. Watch what happens again. Market's gonna come all the way back down to that floor again. As you can see, it's right there in that area again. What we got in that, see that? You saw it wick into that area and watch what it does. It went up again. It's still respecting that trend line. You see that guy? One, two, three, four times. This is respecting that trend line, not to mention this market structure, right? It came down here again and it shot up again. So that could have been another entry for another buy. But again, I had stopped looking at it after it hit my TP on this one. I went on to my other setups that I was looking at. But this is the power of focusing on one pair or two, three at the most, especially as a new trader. One or two pairs is all you need. If you focus on this, this particular trade and you got your setup of your trend line and you see price coming back down to this area of structure and your trend line and it's wicking off, then you can take a buy opportunity with a 15 pip stop loss. And again, you want to target that high with a 40 pip stop loss, I mean TP. In that example, that's a what? One to four risk to reward ratio. So that means if you're risking $1, you can possibly make four. That's a good return on investment right there, y'all. And that's really what trading is all about, is just knowing your risk to reward, controlling your risk, but also looking to maximize your reward. Look for confirmations, uptrend, market structure, right? Bearish and uh, bullish engulfing in this example, buy the market. <laughs> that's it. That's market structure in a nutshell, y'all. So I just wanted to give you guys an example of how I found this setup in the most simplest form of trading that there is, is this market structure. You don't see any indicators on my screen, right? No indicators. All I have is the price candles 
in my drawing up zones for market structure, the candles is all the indicators that you need. All right. So homework, practice, drawing up areas, looking at how markets react to those areas. And um, the easiest way to find those areas too, guys, if you don't want to use just the candlesticks, is to come over here and select the line chart tool in the top left. If you don't see them like this, this particular little down arrow where it says bar style, you have the line chart right there. But because I put this little star next to it, you saw it go away right here in this little shortcut. I put this star right here because I use that a lot. So I don't have to keep going here, click this and go to line chart. But if you go to line chart, just look for times where the market, you see these little, little spikes, right? Look for those, look for those. And when those spikes match up, like right here, see how that spike down, where it spiked down and then shot up, kind of matches around this area, drawing those areas. So like for instance, right here, <clears throat> right up in here, you see how price right here, we, uh, kind of spike down. If you come across here, that spike connects to that spike. So that's another area where you could have drew a box, right? So just go in there and practice that. You know, it's an art, not a science. So right here, if I put my horizontal line right here, matter of fact, let me draw my box. If I go from this particular little spike down right here and connect these couple right here, that's an area of market structure right up in here, y'all. So if I go back to my candlesticks, you'll see price hit this floor right here, broke through, hit his head, hit his head, hit his head, right? Broke above, right? So again, that's market structure in its, in its basics, y'all. So practice that. Don't worry about everything else. Just practice market structure and identifying those levels and just watch how price reacts to that. And you can do that on any time frame. If you want to do it on the one hour, if you want to do it on the 15 minutes, so that way you can have more uh, practice with it. You can look at it on the 15 minute um, because each count is on the 15 minutes, but just, just practice that. Okay, YouTube, so I have an awesome offer. So for just $20, you can get started and lock in your spot on our trading team today. By joining our trading team, you will be provided live trading sessions, also live training session. We also share daily trade ideas slash signals. We have a fun interactive community that you can plug into that will bring you along the way and get you started into your journey of trading. So for just $20, you can preview our trading community and be able to see if trading is for you. If it's not for you, $20 is a pretty good price to preview this awesome system. So if you're interested, check the link below, click on the link, fill out the information, join my team. I'll get you added into our community and then we can get your journey to learning how to trade and be profitable started today. This is a limited time offer, so don't wait. Secure your spot today.